What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Tech and Tomorrow. We're bringing you all the tech all the time. Today on the Tech Table, we have the new Gigabyte WinForce R9280X. AMD fans, I know you guys have been waiting for this card. So without any further ado, let's actually jump in, talk about the features and what this card's about, how it performs, and at the end of the day, whether it's worth your money as the end user. All right, folks, so like I said when I reviewed the MSI Twin Frozen Edition of this card, you guys all know that the R9-280X is a rebranded 79, 70 gigahertz edition card, which, as we said before, isn't a bad thing. You still get all the standard features that you had before and a few other things. You still get the 2048 stream processors, now, this card is actually clocked the highest of the ones that we've seen yet because its core clock is at 1100 megahertz. The standard core clock is at one gigahertz. So you see you've got a lot of little leeway there. You've got a 384-bit memory interface with the memory running at 1500 megahertz. So this card's pretty much exactly the same as the previous generation card. Now, it does support though, DirectX 11.2. That is something new. It's also going to support all of the things that you've seen in the past, iFinity, all that stuff. You've also got some improvement as far as using these cards in a crossfire solution. Now, there still are some micro stuttering issues that are going on with multi-monitor technology, but as far as single monitor technology, the micro stuttering has been improved. And another story we'll be breaking for you guys, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. You can actually use this card with a 7970 gigahertz edition in a crossfire configuration. Now, what makes the Gigabyte card special? Well, their wind force cooling is extremely good cooling. It keeps the card running very cool and keeps the card running pretty quiet as well. Now, as far as the card's cooling goes, it was pretty much neck and neck with the MSI card running about one degree hotter, which only makes sense because it's actually clocked higher as well. So you're getting between 66 and 67 Celsius under full load. That's pretty damn good. That means that this card is running cooler than previous generation cards if only by a little bit, and that's always a good thing. That's gonna allow you to do better overclocking because the cooler the card runs, the more flexible the card is going to be. Gigabyte, like MSI, uses all quality components across the board when they make their card because they want the card to last a long time in your system. Now, as far as the power connectors go, you need a single six pin and a single eight pin power connector. It's 250 watts of TDP for the card. Another cool feature of the Gigabyte WinForce card is its dual BIOS feature, meaning you can set one BIOS for overclocking, one BIOS for normal. And if you happen to mess one of the BIOSes up, you can always flash it and get it right back to normal factory settings. Now, the rear IO of this is exactly the same as the very first reference edition 7970 cards that we saw. It has a single DVI connector, a single HDMI and two main display port adapters. And inside the box, it comes with the main display port to standard display port cable in case you only have that type of cable. So with that said though, let's jump in now, check out the benchmark song, which is the Human Zoo written by yours truly and the staff here at Tech of Tomorrow. And let's check those bad boys out right now. All right, folks, so there you have it. 
You guys can see that obviously the R9 280X is totally kicking ass on the GTX 760 and is going neck to neck with the GTX 770, which is priced at $100 more than this card. Now, in the beginning, we said this is a rebranded card, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because there are a lot of new features. NVIDIA has been known to do this as well, and when you do it, as long as you make some new feature changes improving upon the older technology, that's okay. They've done this here with their new CGN technology, the 11.2 that you're getting with the DirectX. You can run it with an older card. There's a lot of differences here that are going on. Plus, it's priced at $100 and $140 less than competing cards. That's right, you're going to buy a 7970 gigahertz edition last month, it would have been between $100 and $140 more than this card. So that's definitely a solid thing and a winner for the gamers. So at the end of the day, I say this is an editor's choice here for the AMD fans and for those people looking for a card under $300 that'll play all their games at 1080p and even play them at 2056 by 1440. That's right. I'm Elric. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow. If you missed anything, make sure you check out the link down in the description below. We'll have the link over to the full review. And if you're not subbed, hey, there's a little button back here. Make sure you're subbed because we've got all kinds of action always going on on Tech of Tomorrow.